What's going on there, guys? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here on the live stream, uh, October 13th, 2021 to date, Wednesday, that is. About 3.10 p.m. California time, latest quake on the globe is going to be a 2.6 earthquake right around the northern California area. Kind of seeing a little renewed earthquake movement into parts of California over the last 24 hours. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on out here on the USGS map here real quick and uh, take a look. There's the uh, coronal hole and the uh, sun. A couple coronal holes opening up. Geyser activity, that's where that 2.6 just struck. Uh, there was also a little bit of further movement north of the geysers near Lake Pillsbury. Of course, these are 2.5 and above. The all magnitudes kind of brings in a little bit more movement around the Ukiah area. You can see this activity up here on the Bartlett Springs Fault System. This uh, this area here kind of kicked off a uh, 5.7 earthquake a couple years ago, kind of jolted me uh, while I was here in my house in the uh, Chico area. I remember filling that uh, specific quake. So uh, a little bit of further movement around that uh, specific fault system. Up along the Cascadia, Pacific Northwest, things look relatively quiet as far as surface quaking goes. Not a whole lot of movement around any of the uh, volcanoes. Just a little small microquake actually around the Mount St. Helens area. But other than that, not, not a whole lot going on up there. We'll check the trimmer map a little bit later on uh, this evening once it becomes available here in a uh, couple hours or so. So microquake activity ramping up uh, over along the eastern edge of the Sierra Nevadas down through the Ridgecrest area. Stretching back into Nevada around the Tonopah and up through Utah as well where we're seeing kind of a new swarm up here in the southern Idaho area. Just a couple small microquakes but uh, looking at a little handful of quakes kicking up around the North Hansel Mountains. And haven't seen a whole lot of activity in this region for, uh, um, for a while. Of course, around the Utah area, we were watching this little swarm uh, right up against right up against the uh, mountains here in the Cedar, Utah area. That looks like it's coming back here uh, within the last 24 hours. Some further up uh, uptake in earthquake activity around the Los Angeles area, including a 1.8 uh, right around the Anaheim area, Stanton, and also some further movement along the San Jacinto Fault area. Swarming activity looks uh, very minimal. I don't see any swarming. Uh, just some aftershock sequences and areas that have been hit uh, with uh, larger earthquakes in the uh, past couple years. Uh, San or the uh, Sandres fault system here along the creeping section. A little, what, the, what are they trying to do right next to the uh, right next to the San Andreas fault? Let's let's do a query blast and see what happens, right? <laughs> Good lord, 1.5 query blast uh, right off the Sandres fault couple small microquakes uh, in between this little point here on the creeping section. Uh, what else we got here? The Bay Area is relatively quiet along the Hayward and Calaveras Fault System. San Andreas Fault over here to the west of the city. Pretty quiet as well. Looking up towards the Alaska region. Looking at some uh, movement along the Aleutian Trench. Stretching way over here to, to the west. 3.0 near the uh, uh, towards the uh, end of the Aleutian chain. Uh, 25 kilometers, so kind of a down dip earthquake right there in that region. Also some microquakes scattered out and about in the Alaska area. Of course, this is all typical movement in the Alaska region with the plate dynamics of the Pacific and the uh, North American plate interaction. Pretty quiet along the Pacific Ring of Fire here in the western part. We did see a little uh, deep earthquake, 4.1 south of Tokyo, Japan, into the uh, Philippine plate. Pretty deep movement. Also, a swarm of activity through the Indonesia Islands. A lot of deep movement throughout this region, including a deeper earthquake over here around the Tonga area, 4.3, 169 kilometers. I uh, did see a 4.4 out in the China region, but uh, other than that, Mediterranean, Greece area. Um, looks all pretty quiet for now. There's that movement over around the New Madrid area, a little swarm Right smack dab in the uh, New Madrid fault system. A couple small microquakes. Puerto Rico getting in on some activity as well. Around the Puerto Rico trench, you can see that uh, somewhat deeper movement up there around that region. And also down here in the South America region as well. We've seen a 5.4 Chile Argentina border. South Sandwich Islands getting in on a couple earthquakes. 
a little pair of uh, 4.9 at uh, 35 kilometers. Uh, what do we got here for Yellowstone? Looking pretty minimal, folks. Not a whole lot of activity to report in the super volcano region. Some microquakes here showing up on this specific seismograph station in the northwest corner of the park near Maple Creek. Wish I could access that data station again on my live seismos, but for whatever reason, I haven't been able to access it for a few months now, so I'm having to use a station around the canyon area. Canyon Yellowstone sits around the uh, central area, right around the Mary Lake area. And uh, that's kind of uh, not really picking up the activity that we're seeing over here around Maple Creek. Def definitely a, uh, a swarm of microquakes taking place in that region, but not significant yet. Uh, what else we got here going on? The trimmer, of course, that doesn't update until a little bit later this evening. As uh, far as the solar weather department goes, we're seeing... Uh, Things kind of diminish here. Looking over the next three days or so, dwindling geomagnetic storming. Uh, the forecast calls for, uh, as you can see, diminishing activity with only 20-25% uh, chance higher latitude storming, which is very minimal. And sunspot 2882 kind of scooting away from us, not really providing too much in the way of uh, threats when it comes to solar activity. Behind that, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot kicking up at all. Let's see what else we got here. As far as volcano status goes on the big island. Check out the Kilauea volcano. Looking at the orange watch. Really not a whole lot of change from uh, uh, the uh, a few days ago when they lowered that. Let's see here. What else we got? Here's the latest. Looks like uh, October 12th. What do we got here? Photo and video. Some pretty cool photos and videos and whatnot of the activity taking place there uh, at Kilauea. But uh, other than that, folks, not a whole lot of change there on the uh, Big Island either. As far as earthquake activity goes, we'll go ahead and check that out real quick. The all magnitudes. Zooming in. Southeast flank here getting in on uh, quite a bit of action. A couple scattered earthquakes up around the uh, Big Island, including uh, over here around the north of the Hil Helena Slump region, 2.6. Mauna Loa, a, few, a couple small earthquakes around it, and one off the coast, 2.7. But uh, things kind of kind of calm at the moment. But I don't want to don't want to jinx it, right? Definitely don't want to jinx it. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. Uh, just kind of a kind of a minimal day at the moment. Just kind of a bounce back. I think North American plate here kind of lighten up a little bit uh, along the California region. Kind of uh, curious to see what the trimmer will look like this evening with the uh, lack of activity up here in the north. It's it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. Looking at the trimmer map from yesterday. Still seeing quite a bit of movement. 378 epicenters of tremor um, from yesterday. I'm going to go back here to September 20th. And we'll go to the... We'll go to the 13th, which is today. See how many total epicenters of tremor took place here within the last three weeks. Pretty good number. Look at all those ones. One, one, nine, one, one. That's crazy. So close to 12,000 epicenters of trimmer, folks, along the Cascadia subduction zone. And it hasn't stopped. It's, as I showed you, uh, activity yesterday still kicking up. And uh, it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely mostly confi confined to Northern California. Southern Oregon, yes, got some, but it's not as intense or thick in this area. And also another hot spot into the Seattle area and up through Vancouver Island. But uh, Northern California, Southern, this area right here, Southern part of the Cascadia, definitely uh, seeing the brunt of all this trimmer. While the uh, central part, very absent, very absent. And that's kind of, a been, it's kind of been the trend for quite a while. Just seems like this activity never really fills in 
uh, when it comes to catching up, you know, with the rest of the, uh, with the rest of the subduction. Let's see if we got any updates from these guys here. Nope, 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 nope. We already seen this. Oh, well, let's see. Wait a minute. What do we got here? October 10th. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Wait a minute. This ETS is continuing primary in the Olympic Peninsula, but with some burst on the southern. See, they never really discussed what's going on in the southern end. They're just worried about Seattle. I mean, there's a lot going on at the southern end of this Cascadia. Uh, let's see here. Okay, while these plots go from April 1st to 2021 to now and show daily weekly variations around 2 to 3 mm of motion noise in the data, it's pretty obvious to me that these motions deviate significantly downward on the plot toward the west starting at about uh, October 1st. The latest values are 4 to 6 mm below the mean over the past six months, which I am told is significant enough to indicate substantial displacements on the plate interface 30 to 40 kilometers below the instruments. This detect detectable displacement lags a detectable trimmer onset by over a week. This is typical and to be expected since any single trimmer burst is generated by very small motions on a small patch of the interface and many of these must take place before the total area of displacement adds up to be enough to see the actual long-term displacement at the surface. Okay. All about Southern, all about, all about Washington. So what do we got here? Check out that swarm. What do we got? Look at that. That's crazy. Here's kind of a, a, a graph. Trimmer swarms. Latitude. But look at that. That's a lot. I mean, we've had over, what, 11,000, almost 12,000 trimmers um, along the Cascadia within the last three weeks. And it's, I, I can definitely say that there's it's a lot more than what I've seen in the past. This is a yearly chart up here, kind of shows the You know, this this variable, I think it was like every 14 months or so, we kind of get like a, a swarm, a pretty good sized swarm, but nothing like what we've been seeing in the past three weeks. Some of those days were over uh, a thousand trimmers, so that's pretty, pretty significant, folks. I, I think, uh, you know, it's definitely kind of brewing, um, adding some pressure onto the already stressed region of the Cascadia, but uh, who knows, it may hold off for another couple hundred years or it may it may be today it may be right after this video who knows but uh, either way without a doubt are definitely adding strain onto this region for the next mega quake in the pacific northwest it's not a matter of if there's no doubt that's going to take place it's just uh, a matter of when and who knows when we, we i think with the more trimmer that we have the the more likelihood of it happening, at least that's the way, kind of like the way I, I see it. Look at here since July. This goes back, this is kind of a little chart too since about July 4th. Yeah, we get these little bumps of trimmer, but you know, look at this, ever since the 20th of September, man, we're talking about a lot. Let's go ahead and check this out here on the map. Let's see if I can't melt my computer down. Shouldn't, uh, shouldn't destroy it, there we go. See, quite a bit, see? There's this little area right here where it just never really fills up. It never fills up. The rest of Cascadia getting a lot of uh, slippage, if you will, build up. Um, but wow, it just it never really fills up in this region. But 18,251 epicenters. But then again, remember, most of this occurring within the last three weeks, as we've seen uh, almost 12,000 epicenters of trimmer. I'm going to go back a little bit more. First of the year. Let's see what we got. There's that little chart. Looks like back in February, April, May. A little bit. 
A little bit of heightened activity, but look at this lull, this little slow period, if you will, and then really, really ramping up here within the last three weeks. And uh, like I say, I'm kind of curious to see if it'll die down or if it will continue like this or get worse. Let's see how many we got. 51,000. Kind of filled up again up here. You can fill filling up a little bit, but man, there's still that open spot. And then again, it's kind of scattered, not as dense as the other regions here. As you guys can see that on that uh, on the graph here. That's quite a bit. Only only 20,000 will be plotted, so it's not showing us the full 50,000 dots of trimmer on here. But uh, anyway, folks, definitely a lot going on out there in the Cascadia. Uh, I'm going to be on location here real soon with Missy Mimi's, my co-partner here on the channel. We're going to be uh, looking at uh, some interesting uh, activity and some, uh, some tsunami deposits from uh, 1700 Cascadia earthquake in the uh, Pacific Northwest. We'll be up there in uh, the Oregon region here real soon, checking that out. Also, there's a pretty cool uh, region up here in parts of Oregon where there's a, a pretty much a ghost forest. Some ancient trees that got uh, covered up by the tsunami and uh, are still out there. At least the stumps are in some of the roots out on the beach to where uh, it's pretty cool. You can kind of see a little piece of history out there, but we're going to be checking that out here soon, along with um, a bunch of other stuff in relation to the Cascadia subduction zone very soon. So make sure you uh, make sure you don't miss out because we're going to have some good video and some uh, uh, documentary stuff here coming up real soon on this. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you want to be informed on the, Cascadia and of course many other places here on this beautiful planet that we live on when it comes to earthquake activity and uh, you got to click that notification bell or else you won't get notified notified when I post a video anyway folks have a good day we will chat to you guys a little bit later things kind of just kind of mellow right now just kind of calm we'll see how long that lasts right all right guys Take care. We'll, we'll catch up with you a little bit later. Peace out.